All right, so let's jump right into it. Um, with Autodesk, many, many of you know about Rabbit. Almost, I'm sure everybody in here knows what Rabbit is, Rabbit MEP. Three, a little over three years ago, we acquired a company called Micro Application Packages, and they produce, we produce a number of products. We amalgamate them down, simplified them down into CAD MEP, SDMEP, and CAMDUCT. And those are the three products that fabricators, subcontractors use to detail their drawings, to do their spooling, to do their estimating from that. And with CAMDUCT, they, they actually send sheet metal to the plasma cutters. And up until now, we've had the ability with these products to actually take Revit files and export them out to CAD MEP or SMEP and convert them into fabrication level detailed geometry that can actually be spooled and burned, right? This year, however, we've been working for three years to move things a little bit ahead, and we're going to talk about what some of that new technology is. Up until now, you can go from Revit to the fabrication drawings, but it's a little more tricky to get things from the fabrication files back into Revit if you have an as-built deliverable requiring fabrication level detail in it. <clears throat> the key components that made CAD MEP, SMEP, and CAMDUCT work together were two things. It's a MAG file format. It's basically a database holding file and ITM content that's common to all three packages. So the content in Revit is RFA, right? The content in CAD MEP, SMEP, and CAMDUCT is ITM. This year, what we did was instead of adding disruption to the industry by we're trying to make Revit a fabrication level detail tool as well since the time we acquired that company, instead of adding another Revit family file library of fabrication level detail to minimize disruption to the industry, what we decided instead to do was to make Revit read ITM content. So now, in addition to Revit reading families like it always has, it can also read ITM files as well, meaning that we now have the ability to go back and forth between Revit and the fabrication tools as needed to a degree. So <clears throat> the four uh, plus four workflow tools and functionalities are a RIF file conversion. So if you want to go from Revit to the fabrication products, you export the Revit file as a RIF file and then open up the fabrication products and bring those in. You can bring it into CAD MEP or SDMEP. Revit is now ITM portable, meaning that you can import, export ITM content from CAD MEP back into Revit. So let's say you get a Revit project, you convert out the RIF file, you do all the fabricating you want to do, and the owner wants a fabrication level detail BIM deliverable back. What do you do? You simply use the export tool and take the geometry out of CAD MEP back into Revit. So in the Revit file, you'd save the Revit file as your as-built. Then you delete all the ductwork and piping in between the, the equipment. And then you go to CAD MEP or SMEP and bring in the fabrication level detail ductwork. So what the owner is getting is they're getting a fabrication level detail hybrid Revit file. It has some Revit geometry and some fabricated geometry. The reason you want to leave the equipment as is is because that has all the metadata in it about equipment changes, about reordering parts and all that sort of stuff. So you leave that alone. It was, it was bought out anyways. It wasn't fabricated anyways. And then finally, <clears throat> it allows a fabrication level detail model to be to delivered. One of the other, couple other things that you can do here. It, can you start now in Revit as a fabrication level tool? Yes, you can. Is it really, really rev ready for prime time this first release? No. Because if I put in a piece of ductwork, I have to go to elevation view and tip it a little bit, pitch it or pipe, pitch it, and then continue stretching it and doing what I want to with it. It's not really ready for that yet. But the groundwork has been laid, and that's what's key. Next release is we're looking at making, making that better using design line in there, perhaps. W what are the options as far as going from Revit to plasma cutting or going from Revit to spooling? So there, we're obviously thinking of the things everybody's asking for, and those are next steps in the product. Another key thing you can do with this technology now is if you're an MEP firm and you get your project to DD stage, now you want to be able to make sure it's going to work. Last time we lost our shirt because we didn't do whatever with it, and we want to make sure it's going to be okay this time. Let's toss it over the fence to somebody, a subcontractor will pay them a fee to look it over for us. It used to be we'd have to take the Revit file, they would convert it to CAD MEP, make whatever changes and augments, deletions they wanted, and then hand us back a CAD file that we'd have to then get back into Revit. Not anymore. Because Revit now reads ITM content, I give them the Revit file, they take the Revit file, make whatever changes they want to with ITM content, with fabrication level detail content, and hand me back a hybrid Revit file. So it's changing the workflows, changing the way things are happening, and it's also meeting the demand of owners who want a fabrication level detail Revit file. Why they want this, I'm not sure, because O&M really is going to leverage more of a Navisworks or BIM 360 type environment, but that's what they're asking for. <clears throat> These are the three major steps I just kind of covered. I went ahead of myself, but uh, design build, fabrication level, sort of there. 
uh, design assist is better and as-built deliverable is best. Those are the three practicalities from that. The net-net, you can work in between whatever MEP and detailing solutions you need. So if you want to start in Revit or you want to start in CAD MEP, you want to work all the way through, you can. We want to be able to give everybody the ability to work in whatever software they want and go back and forth between them as needed. And with now ITM content unlocked, the content is democratized, means anybody can use it, change it, do whatever they need to with it. And that's it. And we're going to introduce them.